What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great and enjoying freedom. It's a great day to have a great day. Today I wanted to talk about silver and also gold. What else is new? But more specifically, I wanted to talk about why and how to protect your silver to the best of your ability. We're going to get into it, but really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos, subscribe to my second channel for weekly videos, get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel, use promo code LUCKY15 for a 15% discount this weekend only, come and join us in the Precious Metals VIP Club for giveaways, live streams, deal alerts, you can watch Saturday and Sunday's videos right now if you want to, and Saturday morning I'll be posting a brand new adventure vlog, and of course, last but not least, Go and get your five free stocks by downloading Weeble and funding your account. Normally it's two, they bumped it up to five, so capitalize on that while you can. Refer one friend by the end of the month and they're gonna give you 10 free random bonus stocks. It's part of their advertising budget. And if you refer three friends by the end of the month, they're gonna give you at least one free share of Apple with the chance of winning two, three, five, seven, maybe even 10 free shares of Apple. Everything will be linked in the description. So today, is Friday, March 18th, 2022. It's actually Thursday the 17th as I'm filming the video. I have a three-day weekend coming up and I want to make the most of it, which means I have no idea what the spot price is going to be by the time this video drops. So head on down to the comments and let me know the date and time you're viewing the video and what the current spot price is for you. I'm always curious. All right, so today I wanted to talk about how to keep your silver and gold protected, how to protect the coins, the rounds, the bars, how to protect the stack. Now, right off the bat, I know that there are some people watching this video right now and they're thinking to themselves, the only thing I need to protect my silver and gold is the constitution. I have the right to defend myself and my property. Which, yes, could not possibly agree more if you never leave the house. But if you're someone like me, maybe you have a job, maybe you have places that you need to go to, you got things to see and people to do, those are the people that I'm talking to in this video. So I wanted to talk about some items, some supplies, some products, and even some techniques to help keep your silver and gold as protected as possible. I'll be sharing some of the supplies that I've been using for the last four plus years. They've worked great for me and I stand by them. Everything I talk about in this video, by the way, will be in the description, along with other stacking supplies and prepping products that I also use. All the Amazon affiliate links will be in the description in case you want to read about the products a little bit more, or if you want to check out the customer reviews and whatnot, or if you just want to buy them. All the resources will be in the description, but starting April, I'll be removing all of the links. I will no longer be including Amazon affiliate links in the description of my videos, so use them while you can. All right, so without wasting any time, let's just jump into it. First up, let's talk about the importance of having a safe. Now, believe it or not, in the stacking world, safes are considered to be controversial because there are some people that believe a safe is basically an invitation to get robbed. I could not possibly disagree with that mindset more. I have a safe. I believe they are the best way to keep your valuables protected when you're not physically there to protect them yourself. Now, when shopping for a safe, you're going to want to do some research on different brands to figure out which one makes the most sense for you. But the second step in safe shopping is figuring out what size safe you should get. I would recommend checking out some safes in person. That way you can kind of gauge how much silver or gold you'd be able to fit in it. Personally, I've always found that it's best to figure out the perfect size product and then go one size bigger. Go big or go home. That's the approach that I take and that's the approach that I took with my safe and it's also the approach that I took when it comes to my water purification unit. I was going to go with the 1.5 gallon unit. It would have been perfect. Instead, I went with a 2.25 gallon unit. Same thing applies to my portable power station. I was going to go with the 240 watt one. Instead, I chose to go with the 500 watt one. The Big Berkey and the Jackery 500, just in case anybody wants to read a little bit about them, the products that I use, they will also be linked in the description. But 
When it comes to the safe, trust me, you're going to fill it up a whole lot quicker than you're expecting. Now, unfortunately, safes can be kind of expensive. And if you just recently started stacking and you don't have a whole lot of silver just yet, Something you can do in the meantime while you're saving up for a proper safe, you can go for a mini lockbox. They're really cheap, and some protection is clearly better than no protection at all. It's not burglar proof, as it can just simply be picked up and carried away, but it'll offer you some protection in the event of a fire, let's just say. It'll protect it far better then your sock drawer would protect it. The lockbox that I use, not for silver, but for just documents and whatnot, is from a brand called First Alert, and I've actually been using it since long before I was even stacking silver and gold. That link will be in the description in case you want to check it out. The next item, or should I say items, I want to talk about are three different types of storage tubes. I'll run through these kind of quick because I just made a whole video about them earlier this week. But long story short, we have airtight tubes, we have mint tubes, and we have generic tubes. So airtight tubes are about $20 a piece, but they come with 20 different airtight capsules they're designed for higher premium coins or collectible pieces that you're going to want to keep in as pristine condition as possible. These are size H40. They're for Silver Eagles. It's a rookie mistake. So make sure you get the right size that you need. Do a quick little Google search to figure it out beforehand before you go and buy airtight tubes and capsules. But in case you need them, the link will be in the description. The mint tubes are for specific government minted coins. These in particular, this one right here, these are for silver eagles, which you can get a whole five pack for about maybe 15, 16 bucks. They're also made for maple leafs, Britannias, etc., etc., etc. What I like about these is that they fit just as many silver eagles as an airtight tube for silver eagles. They both hold 20, but they take up about half as much space, being that you don't have to put each individual coin in a capsule. And what's cool about these tubes is that they're also pretty thick, and the lids take a bit of effort to pop off. You're going to have to, it's not impossible, it's not all that difficult, but you're going to have to pry it off either with your, your fingernail or, or a knife or something like that in order to pop it off, which is good. You don't have to worry about the coins spilling all over the place in the event that it topples over or you drop it or something like that. This is how I store all of my silver eagles nowadays, even though I'm unfortunately no longer stacking silver eagles. So I couldn't possibly be happier with all of the mint tubes that I've filled up. Like this one over here, full of silver eagles over the years. Link in the description in case you need some mint tubes. And then, of course, we have generic tubes for, you guessed it, generic silver rounds. These are really cheap. And by that, I mean they're not only inexpensive, but they're also not the highest quality, but they're not supposed to be. They're thin. They could be a little bit flimsy. You can actually tell. You might be able to tell. You can bend it a little bit. I have not dropped one. I have not done any type of test like that, but I would pretty much guarantee if you drop one of these full of silver, it would crack open. Probably, not exactly sure. Not really willing to test it, but point being is that they're not the highest quality. They're thin, the lids pop off very easy, so make sure to tape them shut. You can go and get a whole 10 pack for around 10, 11, maybe $12 right now. Definitely worth it if you're stacking silver rounds. Link in the description. Now moving away from storage tubes, I wanna also talk about an item that I don't ever hear anybody talking about. 
anti-tarnish paper. Just by keeping this stuff in the safe, it'll help prevent the face of your coins or rounds or bars from discoloring over time. You can even stick them inside of one of the storage tubes that I listed off before, the airtights, the mint tubes, or the generic tubes. It's anti-tarnish paper, so it's obviously paper thin. You can just stick one of these in each tube if that's what you want to do. They absorb the chemicals and pollutants that are in the air that would otherwise end up on the face of your silver. Nobody wants that. Now I know people might be listening right now and thinking, oh, that's fugazi, fugazi, it's a wazi, it's a woozy. But seriously, this stuff works. I've been using anti-tarnish paper for the last four years, and the only tarnished silver that I own are the coins, rounds, and bars that were already tarnished when I got them, or the pieces of silver that I intentionally allowed to tarnish by sitting out and about not in the safe because I liked the way that it looked and I thought it would give it character. For example, my 5-ounce Aztec calendar round that isn't on display today, but it's on display most other days, I wanted that to tarnish. So I didn't include that in the safe where I keep anti-tarnish paper. And guess what? It's not just for coins. Antique shops and jewelry stores use this stuff too to protect the items made out of, as you can see right here, silver, nickel, copper, bronze, brass, gold, and pewter. Anti-tarnish paper is even used to keep musical instruments from discoloring over time. I'm telling you, this stuff is the real deal, and it takes up absolutely no space. It's paper thin. Anti-tarnish paper, link in the description. And now finally, the last method of keeping your silver protected that I wanted to talk about isn't a product or an item. It's your freaking mouth. Keep it shut. You don't have to tell everyone and their brother that you're stacking valuable metals that are appreciating in value. You don't have to go about doing all that. Now I know that might sound weird coming from the guy that makes videos 365 days a year talking about the valuable metals, but nobody that I know in real life knows that I am stacking silver and gold. I've told like two people and it was only because they're stacking too. None of my other friends know. My family doesn't know. My neighbors don't know. My coworkers don't know. And I plan on keeping it that way. And by the way, just for the record, it is not because I'm paranoid and think that my friends and family are going to try to rob me. It's because I have no control over who they accidentally tell without even having bad intentions. It could just come up in conversation. Happens all the time. Talking to somebody about something and all of a sudden they bring up something that I remember that I had a conversation with somebody else about a long time ago and I'm like, hey, do you know this person? It's just part of having a conversation. They could be talking about, I don't know, gold chains with that guy from high school that's still trying to become a famous rapper and end up innocently saying, hey, speaking of gold, remember DYDSS? He's got gold at his house. You should go talk to him about it one day. No, thank you. That's the last thing I want because God only knows what Josiah, otherwise known on SoundCloud as Lil Home Invasion, is going to do. Again, I know I make videos about the silver and gold. One could argue that to play it even safer, don't make videos about it, which to that I say, they may be right. But the way I see it, no one I know in real life knows that I'm stacking, and no one that knows that I'm stacking has any idea where to find me in real life. The day someone knocks on my door to tell me that they like my videos is the day I'll reconsider what I'm doing on the internet. So those are just some of my ways of keeping my silver and my gold as protected as possible. Quick recap, I use safes 
to store my valuables. I use different types of tubes to store different types of coins, mainly for organizational purposes, to be honest. I use anti-tarnish paper to prevent my coins from discoloring over time. And of course, I don't go around advertising that I own valuable metals. Again, all Amazon affiliate links are in the description. Click them, go read more about the products for yourself, check out the ratings, check out the other customer reviews. If you wanna buy them, feel free. And I'll be removing all links at the end of the month so use them while you can. Now there's one last thing that I wanted to add to what I was just talking about when it comes to keeping your mouth shut. That's a general good rule to follow if you want to keep it away from people that shouldn't know that you're stacking. You probably should tell the bare minimum number of people. Now unfortunately the problem is you're going to want to talk about it, especially if you're new to the silver and gold stacking world. If you haven't been stacking for a very long time, and it's something that you just got started with, or it's something that you're brand new to, it's very similar to any other hobby out there, whether it be, I don't know, art, or fishing, or cars, or anything, anything that you're interested in. Working out, investing, animals, whatever the case may be, any interest that you have, you're going to want to bring it up in conversation with the people that you know, your friends, your family, your co-workers, your neighbors. That's just human nature. We enjoy talking about the things that we enjoy talking about. Go figure. What a, what a phenomenon. What a, what a weird thing. We like to talk about the things that we enjoy talking about and the things that we enjoy doing. So it's almost like a situation where you're, you're, almost, you're almost caught, where you know that it's probably best and probably safest to keep it to yourself, but you want to talk about it for maybe a couple of different reasons. Maybe just because you have a hard time keeping secrets and you just want to talk to somebody about something, or maybe it's because you, you want to see if you can get somebody else interested in stacking as well. Like I just said, it goes for absolutely everything. If you're really into cars, you're probably going to talk to somebody who maybe doesn't know the first thing about cars to see if you could try to get them into cars. That way, you know, they can get themselves started working on a car or whatever, modifying a car or going to car shows. And then all of a sudden now you have something in common that you didn't have in common before. Maybe it's a family member that you're trying to help out. See, this is something that I tried to do. Like I said before, my, my friends and family don't know that I'm stacking, but about four years ago, I did bring it up in conversation just as a method of trying to help. I didn't start the conversation with, hey, by the way, I'm stacking a whole bunch of silver and gold and you should too because blank, blank, blank. No, I talked to certain family members that don't necessarily have the greatest track record when it comes to their finances. Maybe they have credit card debt. Maybe they have a spending problem. Maybe they don't earn nearly as much currency as they should be earning. I've talked to family members about this. If they have a problem, I'm not a problem-oriented kind of guy. I'm a solution-oriented kind of guy. If you present a problem... I do what I need to do to present a solution. And being that a lot of people out there, they're just complainers by nature, I guess. Certain family members, they've complained about their situation before. They've complained about things that they have full control over. They complain about things that they have no control over at all. And at the end of the day, it usually, almost 100% of the time, comes down to finances. Maybe they're stressed about the bills. Maybe they're worried about inflation. Maybe they are regretful from all the spending that they did. Maybe they acknowledge that they have no idea how to budget or how to save money. See, I'm going to speak for myself. I won't speak for everyone out there, but the way my family works is that if they found a $10 bill on the ground, they wouldn't put it in their pocket. 
they would pick it up and they'd go run to the closest store and figure out how they can spend that $10. What can I buy for $10? They won't even wait to find another $10 bill and then they could buy something for $20. No, by the time they find another $10 bill, the first $10 bill is already gone. And now they have $10 worth of junk that they didn't need sitting on the shelf or whatever. For whatever reason, certain family members of mine are just like that. I don't know why. I never understood it. I've never been that way my entire life. I seem to be the only one that kind of prioritizes personal finances. In fact, I was actually taught at a pretty young age, spend it while you got it. That's what I was told. As crazy as that sounds, it makes no sense. It made no sense to me back then, and it definitely doesn't make any sense to me today. But point being is that certain family members of mine, not all my family, not everybody's family out there, but I'm sure you know people like this. They just can't save money. So I figured that the silver and gold is somewhat of a money spending deterrent because in a weird way, it kind of offers you what most other purchases offer you. See people, maybe they have that shopaholic mentality where they just get some type of a rise or they get some type of some type of satisfaction out of just purchasing something. So even though the silver and gold, I don't really see it as a purchase. I don't really see it as something that I'm buying. I see it as more of a conversion than anything else. But what if I advertise it as a purchase? What if I highlight, showcase, and share some of the benefits to stacking silver or stacking gold. I could talk about the pros and the cons. I can talk about how I personally believe that there are far more pros than cons. I can talk about what it can do for you and how it can kind of change the way you think about money or especially change the way you think about currency. Somebody has a problem when it comes to currency or when it comes to money. Why not offer them a potential solution? So if they have this constant need to spend, why not spend it on something that can act as a potential store of value? And you spent the currency already, so it's not like you can take a sunshine bar, a 10-ounce silver bar, or, or a quarter-ounce gold coin. You can't just run to Target with that and, and make a purchase. If you want the currency back, you're going to have to go and get a middleman, third party. You're going to have to go and sell the piece of metal first, which isn't difficult. As long as the coin shop's open, you can do that. As long as you have access to the internet, you can sell it online. It's no problem in any way, shape, or form. But it's an additional step that I personally believe demotivates people. A lot of people don't want to have to go out of their way just to get the currency, just so they can go out of their way to spend the currency. To do that just for the sake of going shopping, most people aren't going to. In an emergency, people are going to be willing to do that because they'll have no other choice. But it's a quick and easy transaction to sell the silver or sell the gold to get the currency back if you need to. So what I tried to do probably about three and a half to four years ago, I tried to introduce stacking to a certain family member of mine. And long story short, didn't do anything. Seemed to go in one ear and out the other, similar to everything else I say to this family member. <laughs> but I didn't even talk about silver, to be honest with you. I talked about gold. And the reason for that was just because of this person's living situation. If they're living in a one-bedroom apartment, they probably don't have a crazy amount of room for a nice big giant safe that they're going to fill to the brim with a bunch of silver coins. It's probably not going to be the case. So even though silver is my precious metal of choice, I presented them with gold and I recommended it. I said, did you know if you have $2,000 or at the time it was like fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500 or something like that. If you have fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500, you can pack that into a little ounce of gold. Fits in the palm of your hand. It's not very much at all. You can hide it anywhere. You can put it anywhere. It takes up no space. And you can go with fractional gold if you want. If that's easier for you. 
If you don't have $1,500, maybe you only have half of that or a quarter of that or a tenth of that, you can get a half, a quarter, or a tenth of an ounce of gold with a smaller amount of currency. Kind of like what I have right there on, on display. That's how I tried to present it to a family member. So if you're going to introduce the silver and gold, like I said before, I know this might sound like very off track from the first half of the video, but in the first half of the video, I said, keep your mouth shut. You don't need to advertise to everyone that you're stacking silver and gold. You can introduce silver and gold to people without advertising that you're stacking silver and gold. They don't have to know that you're doing it. You can reference one of my videos. You can be like, hey, I was just fooling around watching a whole bunch of videos on YouTube the other day and I found this idiot called DYDSS who talks about coins. Didn't make sense to me, but it seems like it might make sense to you and boom, send them my video. Let me do the talking. I make these videos for a reason. These videos are resources. People can reference back to them. People can send them to people that they care about to help educate them or just to simply introduce them to something. Or... If you're one of those people who watch all of my videos from start to finish just so you can ridicule those who are stacking, please send this video to every person you know and mock me. Please send it to everyone. I challenge you. Send it to a thousand people today. Help me get my views up. <laughs> but seriously, though, you can introduce a concept to somebody while also keeping your mouth shut when it comes to your own personal business. Because at the end of the day, it's really no one's business what you're doing when it comes to money. It's nobody's business how much money you're making, how much you're spending, how much you're investing, or how much you're converting into silver and gold. Truth be told, if you'd be unwilling to advertise how much cash you keep in your savings account or your checking account, you probably shouldn't be telling people how many troy ounces you keep in the safe. That's the general rule of thumb that I go by. Nobody knows how much silver and gold I have. I just I have a little bit of silver and gold. A couple of coins, <laughs> to say the least. But you can help people without oversharing your own personal business. Look at my entire channel. Not one time have I shared how much silver and gold I have. But I make videos every single day to help people. And you can do the same. You don't have to do it with videos, but you can help somebody that you know, a friend, a family member, a coworker, a neighbor, without letting them know your own personal financial business. So anyway, I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. When it comes to some of the different supplies that I use, when it comes to a safe, or when it comes to a miniature lockbox, or when it comes to different storage tubes, airtights, mint tubes, generic tubes, different types of tubes for different types of silver, and of course, anti-tarnish paper, what are your thoughts? Do you use any of those products? If you don't and you're interested, once again, last time I'll say it, everything will be linked in the description. All the products that I talked about, all of the products that I didn't even talk about, other silver and gold supplies, along with all of the prepping supplies that I use and enjoy and stand by, not sponsored by a single one of them, I'm just a happy customer, so all the Amazon affiliate links will be in the description, and they're all being removed at the end of the month, so use them while you can. But I want to know what your thoughts are regarding the products that I shared in this video. What steps have you taken to keep your silver, to keep your gold as protected as possible? Head on down to the comments and let me know. If you guys like today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, Subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for weekly videos. Go and get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel in the biggest possible way. We got t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, coffee mugs in a bunch of different designs. Make sure to use promo code LUCKY15 for a 15% discount on everything in the DYDSS store this weekend only. DYDSS store will be linked in the description. Come and join us in the Precious Metals VIP Club, which is where I do giveaways every single month, live streams multiple times a week, deal alerts on silver and gold almost every single day. You can watch all of my videos early and commercial free. You can actually watch Saturday and Sunday's videos right now if you want to. And Saturday morning, I'll be posting a brand new adventure vlog. This one's really interesting. You're going to want to watch that. 
And there are a ton of other perks as well. I guarantee you the value exceeds the cost. VIP club link in the description. And of course, last but certainly not least, make sure to go and get your five free stocks by downloading Weeble and funding your account. Normally it's two, they bumped it up to five, so capitalize on that while you can. If you refer one friend before the end of the month, Weeble is going to give you 10 free stocks for the referral. It's part of their advertising budget. Rather than wasting currency on billboards and commercials, they reward the users for helping them build their app with them. And if you refer three friends by the end of the month, they will give you a spin on the Weeble wheel, which guarantees you at least one free share of Apple, with the possibility of also winning two, three, five, seven, maybe even ten free shares of Apple. If you don't want the stocks, go and get them anyway, sell them, congratulations, now you have some currency to go and get you some money if that's what you want. Weeble link in the description, time is running out. And I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know once again, everything shared in today's video, when it comes to the safe or when it comes to the mini lockbox, one for ultimate protection and one just for a little bit of protection against fires, when it comes to different tubes for different types of silver, air tights for the higher premium, more collectible ones, mint tubes for just standard government minted coins, generic tubes for generic silver rounds, and of course, anti-tarnish paper to help prevent your coins from discoloring over time. And then of course, the technique of just keeping your mouth shut and not advertising to everyone that you know, everyone and their brother, everyone and their brother's neighbor, and everyone and their brother's neighbor's cousin, that you're stacking the silver and the gold. Just simply because, not for being paranoid, but it's just not their business. If you have other supplies, other techniques that you'd like to share, head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you tomorrow. Don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.